Hello, welcome to our webinar on how to furlough your assets. You'll hear today about some scenarios on how and when companies are utilising this facility and how it's positively impacted upon them. It's an interactive session, so please use the chat function below to ask any questions and the EACS elves in the background will, uh, will make sure you get your answers. Usually at presentations like this, we do some health and safety announcements, but as you're probably at home, you already know where the exits are and I doubt you have any fire alarm tests. With me being at home, I do have a tribe of quite young children. They were under strict instructions to be silent uh, with the promise of a sugary reward should they uh, should they be so, but they rarely listen to anything I say, so I do apologise if uh, in advance if you hear a rabble in the background, there's very little I can do about it. I'm joined by Francis Weston today from Managing Director of Econocom. Hello, Francis. Hello, Andrew. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so we'll do some formal introductions as we run through the presentation and, uh, and there'll be a prize draw at the end. So join us in the question and answer session and uh, we're, we're drawing out the names of the attendees for a Samsung tablet and a, uh, a hamper of wine. Now there is a uh, another special prize for anybody who can list the old computers in the year that they were released in the, in the video that Econocom Just Switch has in the exhibitor booth. Uh, one of which is only on screen for half a second and as you can see I am a, I'm a raging geek. I do collect old computers and uh, is anyone up to the challenge? Um, I'm looking forward to it. So today we'll run through why EACS is a partner for the future. EACS Revo is quite a simple finance facility, so we've got some bullet points on that. We've also got some example scenarios of where people have used that facility uh, in, in the past. And then Francis will talk through Econocom, the subscription economy, and uh, how to get the best of digital at the right time without subscriptions. So EACS uh, is a partner for the future. Uh, we're a specialist in the delivery of IT solutions, services and support into the mid-market, but we've also got very deep technical skills in certain areas which are utilised by our, by our large enterprise clients. Our history is one of technical support. We started supporting pharmaceutical companies in and around Cambridge. And over this time, we've developed a, uh, a quite robust set of complementary services and products, which gives us a very broad tool set to address business needs. Over the 26 year history that we've had, we've seen a very, uh, very great changes in the, in the technology landscape, but not the, the more rapid changes in the business requirements of our, of our clients. Particularly over the past five or six years, those SME pressures and the expectations that they, they, they have for their technology uh, has only really been seen in our, in our large enterprise clients prior to that. And uh, we pride ourselves on being able to discern technology needs from from those business requirements and focusing on the the objective of the project rather than the rather than the technology. This past year in particular has seen a tumultuous upheaval in in business, and, and I'm I'm really proud of the way our clients and how we've supported them have reacted to that uh, in what was uh, survival mode for for a lot of our clients. Last year, some of the challenges we were helping our our clients with was remote working, uh, equipment, making sure we got the right thing in the right place, licenses. Uh, but also the making sure that people are working and supporting the business in, in what they need to do. There's been some subtle changes this year and some of the pressures that we're helping our clients with, uh, uh, again, survival continues into lockdown three. We've got the hybrid office lifestyle. Uh, so people are still going to the office, but they're, they're working from home a lot more, and particularly for our global um, clients that have got offices in and around the world, then working remotely in a different country to a system that's back in the UK, is it, it, it needs a careful balance. But having that home working becoming more predominant, the rationalization of the property needs is quite, is quite key. We're talking to a lot of our clients around, um, uh, around consolidating offices, opening uh, just single offices. And we've got one uh, household name, uh, they're a trade union that are pursuing a complete no bricks and mortar uh, office strategy. So they will have Regis or, um, you know, uh, ad hoc meeting rooms uh, should they need to gather, but they're going to be a total virtual company. Uh, and that's, that's a 300 user uh, business. So it's, it is, it has provided a, uh, a real uh, impetus for business change, but not so much in, uh, uh, not as much in business process. So when sending people home, working from home, business process, communication, what they do for the business in their uh, in their roles is quite is quite difficult to maintain when when you've got uh, the distractions of working at home. 
one of the key things that we see in 2021 is monitoring and that isn't of infrastructure but of people at home are they working are they online are they productive and providing some hr dashboards for people around uh, monitoring uh, people's mental health at home is quite a key point uh, security is fractured um, uh, with working from home people have put uh, walls around their offices and those walls are no longer there and sending people home on their domestic BT routers is also something that, that people are considering in 2021. Now projects to address all of those business pressures uh, are limited by the lack of cash. Uh, you know, People aren't spending particularly in, in retail, particularly in uh, some of our more consumer facing clients, they are really, really uh, uh, cash constrained, but in order to survive they're, they're in a catch 22. So moving on to uh, EACS Rebo as a way of, uh, as a way of addressing that um, is, uh, as I said, this is very simple. You provide us with a, a kit list of equipment that you've maybe invested in in 2019 in a, in a particular platform. Uh, we agree a price, you invoice uh, Econocom and cash is released. It is a, a relatively simple um, four or five step process. Now at the start of the agreement, cash is released from the assets and uh, you pay that back quarterly over three or five years and a deferred initial payment can be, uh, uh, can be made. It's quite a simple service uh, but at the end of the agreement the equipment is collected, it's wiped and returned and the, the kind of stuff that's in scope, we'll go through it in the examples that I'll run through shortly, uh, but IT hardware, audio visual equipment, uh, exotic equipment, which I think is a fab fabulous term that I've not heard before engaging with uh, uh, with Econicom, that stuff like manufacturing equipment, tools, plants, medical equipment, that kind of thing, uh, telephony systems, mobile phone handsets. So if you have invested in 2019, 2020 in new equipment and uh, with a view to growing uh, through 2020, that investment isn't providing the value that you need. So uh, releasing that cash to do the projects to tweak what you need to do for, uh, for, for the new way of working uh, is uh, it's been really beneficial for, for some of our clients. Now I've got some uh, some examples, some scenarios to run through. There, there are three, they're not all cashbacks, it is quite simple, there's only so many different ways I can say get this price invoice cash, um, but um, so I've got one on lease on software to enable a business change, uh, some cashback to release cash and also a blended one of lease and uh, and cashback. So this first, uh, this first client is an NHS business partner. They're a bit in survival mode, but they are still going after new business. They tender for their business and they've got, they've required some software for compliance. Uh, the one year deal was quite expensive, um, but a three year deal was 30% cheaper over that time. But again, the, the software company wanted all the money in year one. Uh, so being able to lease the software at 100% and there are no uh, ratio challenges with, with Econocom, we can lease 100% software or a mixture of hardware services and software. Um, there, then the cost of cash was actually uh, less than the discount they were receiving. So it became a bit of a no-brainer. They were able to defer the payment uh, and they were able to make their business change, get compliant with the tenders that they were going after uh, and break that down into a, a quarterly payment. That really worked for them. Another client is um, uh, was after cash release. So they're an accounting firm. They'd actually spent big in 2019-20 on offices in London, lots of AV equipment, um, and it's in offices that aren't being used at the moment. So they weren't weren't pulling any business value from, from the AV equipment that they'd installed. So we furloughed their assets and gave them the cash back. They got a three-year agreement uh, and that, that helped them with their, with their cash constraints. Now the third example is um, uh, is a, a company who were having some business challenges around uh, productivity. So this is a company that's in insurance. They, uh, are, again, in survival mode, uh, they'd invested in their core infrastructure in 2019 with a view to refreshing uh, desktop estate um, moving on uh, after that. Um, but with uh, the lockdown of people working from home, they, they were finding their productivity was being hit. They had old equipment. And it was a real choppy end user experience. Their sales were contracting and uh, the services were uh, to the clients were, were dipping. So a mixture of uh, cash back from the core infrastructure, a project that they did, which 
uh, help stabilise the business with that, that kind of core strength that a finance facility like that provides. Uh, but then they leased a load of new hardware for their uh, for their people, and they're able to um, increase service, release project spend, uh, and get better cash flow from a you know from that core strength of a finance facility. So those three uh, three scenarios in which finance helped us address the needs of our business was uh, was really interesting for us and uh, and it, it helps us assist our clients in in their growth plans in, uh, and and cash flow that kind of thing. So coming on to Econicom, uh, we really enjoy partnering with Econicom. They, we 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 feel like there is a shared ethos there. Uh, so we focus on what clients need, not generally what they ask for. The two tends to be quite mutually exclusive, and you know we we try and apply technology to a business change. And uh, one of the uh, the Econocom strap lines that I've shamelessly stolen is the best of digital at the right time without restrictions. And EACS deliver that for our clients and, and Econocom with providing that the the core strength that that comes from a good finance facility is able to to deliver that as well. And uh, they don't consider themselves as a partner, but one of strategic consultants, which which really fits with the way we, we interact with our clients as well. So Francis, hello. Uh, before, hello. Uh, before taking our guests on that financing journey, uh, what, what differentiates it kind of come? I think you put it so eloquently. So we are here really as a guide and we take a consultative approach with all of our clients and we try to listen out for needs and wants and really create solutions tailor-made to make sure that they are uh, keeping with their ambition statements as well as their overarching, you know, long-term goals. Fabulous. Well, um, take us through uh, take us through the switch to the subscription economy. Yeah. Well, here is a topic that I think that we talk about on our day to day, or at least we exercise on our day to day, and we don't necessarily see what's happening in the background. So, I'm going to give you a little bit about myself, a little bit about Conocom, and uh, reasons why you know it's important to pay attention to the subscription economy and how to take part specifically with uh, within the IT um, industry. So uh, I started a Concom, um, I started at a Concom in March of 2020. I had about one week in the office and then I was rolled out from work from home. Um, I am a, a career banker. Uh, I've been at Barclays and other large institutions. And one of the things that struck me was how do we become more engaged in the changes on the digital uh, landscape, yet still uh, work from a financial angle. And Economom really allowed me to do both at the same time simultaneously. So I currently run the UK, Ireland, as well as North America. And as you can probably hear by my accent, I'm definitely a transatlantic person. I've lived lots of different places um, and I've been able to look at uh, market trends as such. So here is one of them. And really, the subscription economy for me means so many things. But I'm going to talk to you firstly a little bit more around um, us as a group. So if we move on to the next slide, we are an international provider as a service model. Um, we are listed in Brussels. Um, we have over 10,000 uh, employees and have over 40 years experience. Started by a gentleman called Jean-Louis Bouchard. He started um, the organization in 1974 when he understood very quickly about trends, specifically in obsolescence risk when it came to IT, and specifically looking at mainframe standard IT. Now, what we do is standard as well as the exotic that Andrew alluded to, and I'm going to give you a bit more of an idea of what that can look like in practice. But before we get there, let's talk about subscriptions, real life subscriptions. We are in a scenario where, or a life where, product ownership is dead. Owning a product and knowing that whether it's a vehicle or whether it's uh, a computer mainframe, the minute that vehicle parks into your uh, driveway, or the minute that you start owning that asset um, IT-wise, that suddenly becomes a depreciating asset. So the view around the subscription economy is really changing product ownership into service, and then also looking at ownership as a usage facility as opposed to actually outright ownership and title carrying. Um, why do we do this? Well, the first and foremost piece is because we want to reduce obsolescence risk. And obsolescence risk is really one of the risks that we don't necessarily take into account when we actually transact and buy um, an asset. So what we're looking at here is really more life cycle extension and changing the way that we think about um, 
around technology. The good news is, is that it changes also the imprint around the financial side. So essentially, instead of capital expenditure, looking at really saving a lump sum in order to be able to go out and, and, and buy assets, you're looking at more of operational expenditure, which is the amortization of cost over a period of time. And that allows you to reduce this obsolescence risk, but also look at that tech refresh life cycle um, more regularly, knowing that the asset you might have has a three to five or six or seven year shelf life and matching that with a new asset um, at the right time in the right place. So this is really where that linear, old school linear models of buying, owning, disposing, and starting that cycle again with large upfront cash flows changes to become more of a circular model and actually is better for the environment in order for us to look at things like e-waste plans and look at the next life cycle and the next changes of that asset, which could be used in another way, but at the same time allowing you and your business to grow with the times and evolve in a really positively digital um, way. So that's really where the market is going, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. And actually, when it comes to day to day, if we move on, we are doing this in a lot of the different things that we do. So if you lease a car, you're, you're in the subscription economy. If you watch Netflix, you're in the subscription economy. Gone are the days where you had piles of DVDs, hundreds and thousands of DVDs, and you were watching movies, um, uh, Blu-rays, etc. You are now streaming practically everything. And if you understand that, well, hopefully you understand why it's so important that we take this mindset and we transform it into um, standard and non-standard IT equipment. So let's bring it back to today. So 2021, um, you know, global pandemic is still on the rise. We are in a situation where companies are delaying their, their transformation projects because of the fact that we didn't know where we were going in 2020. But now we know something very simple, is that if you were, um, from a treasury perspective, involved in the C bill scheme that the government issued, or if you are facing declining revenues, and fixed costs that haven't changed, this is a perfect way to inject cash back into your balance sheet. So what we're doing is we are looking at cash positions and trying to optimize those cash positions to really work in survival mode and allow you to inject cash where it matters and to still continue with your large plans and visions for the future when it comes to digital transformation. So we've all switched to remote working, and that led to a lot of unforeseen investments as well as a rise in certain costs. Um, and sometimes massive declining revenue doesn't necessarily mean um, or doesn't make the right type of outcome from a balance sheet perspective. So this is a way to be able to fix that and rejig um, what is currently happening with, um, with your IT expenditure. So questions for you. The first is, you know, do you really need to own all of those assets on your balance sheet? Are they serving the right purpose for you in the short to medium to long term? And is ownership really the best idea? Andrew went into a fantastic example around AV equipment that wasn't being used in office space. Well, that is exactly the point. If it's not being used, how do you best put it to work without having to maintain something that perhaps isn't necessarily at the top of your agenda and really looking at priorities and firefighting as opposed to um, you know, dealing with, with, with other issues um, and actually just sitting on assets um, that are day by day depreciating. So this is the third question on this is, you know, does cash genera generation mean more to you today and add greater value than sitting on assets? And in most circumstances and with most of our clients, we found that absolutely, you know, cash injection and cash is king in this environment. So if we move on, you know, in 2020, think about what happened. You probably invested a quite a large amount in hardware to be able to facilitate the screens, the new laptops, um, the equipment that you needed from work, uh, working from home. So all the peripherals, masks, laptops, etc., um, as well as keyboards. Um, those types of pieces, you know, they cost money. And one of the things that we be able to do is really learn and, and show our clients how to reinvest that cash and extract it from those assets and reinvest it so it can be used immediately on other more important matters. So it really works as if you sell us those assets uh, or to any financing partner, and then what we will do is immediately rent those back to you. And at the end of the term, we decide what's the 
best course of action, whether it's a new waste plan, whether it's refreshing, whether it's keeping and extending. It's a very simple equation that we do, and we do this for clients um, on a multinational level, uh, day in, day out. So this is the way and the most straightforward way to benefit from a subscription economy, and it generates cash immediately, where, and then you can then decide where you need it most. So the benefit um, really are very simple. It releases cash trapped in those assets, and you can deploy it towards new digital transformation projects or to wherever you need it the most. Switching to a subscription economy allows you to manage your IT estate in a much more agile way. And you simply, on our side, you can decide, do you want to pay monthly? Do you want to pay quarterly? Do you want to have a bit of, of time to breathe? In terms of a longer period until you start making those payments. We do all of that um, very simply on a day-by-day -day basis. Now, if we move on, here is one of the situations where eligibility is key, but we are very flexible in this matter. So we can do everything to when it comes to meeting rooms and AV equipment, and Andrew alluded to, lighting, smart lockers, signage, workplace assets, self-checkout, pin pads, ticket machines, car park tech, medical equipment, media tech. Literally, we can pra practically do anything. As long as it's not on wheels and it has a digital um, a digital angle to it, we will definitely have a look at it. So the next piece is, you know, how does this work in practice? And what are the administrative um, tasks that you would need to do in order to make this happen? Well, the first is you would have to think about the assets that are eligible and what you would like to um, sell. The next is to determine their book value, and then from then on, to collect all supplier invoices for the assets um, to share with us. Then you would send that to your financing partner, such as Econocom, um, with the net book value, and then we would determine the best way to um, uh, create a payment plan for you. And this really is just allowing to you to use your cash and really be part of that subscription economy. Um, that's it for me. I hope that that was pretty insightful, but hopefully you understand the easy steps as to how to make this work. And I thank you, Andrew, for having me today. It's been fun. And if you have any questions, please feel free to get in contact. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. No, thank you very much, uh, Francis. That was great. I really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed that. Thank you all for listening. Please drop to the exhibitor booth where Francis and I will be available for questions and doing the prize draw. Many thanks. Yay. Thanks, Andrew. Bye now.